Punk rock's a living thing. It's about turning problems into assets. And as a first generation British born black, that's something I know a lot about. That was the thing about the racial climate in Britain. It was pretty on fire when it came to dealing with the authorities, like the police and stuff like that. And for us, being the generation born and raised here, it wasn't about trying to fit in. We had a different fight. So the Roxy Club is this punk club, and Don was going to be the DJ. One day he just announced, I'm going to get a camera. And from that moment, he was filming practically every band that played there. Don saw it. He was ahead. You know, he saw what they were into, the attitude, and what they were trying to say. Now he was involved in this new movement that was happening. The thing about Don was that he was always on a mission to achieve something. And that was the vehicle. Don's place in Forest Hill was great fun. We go there after the Roxy sometimes, driving Don's little car all squashed in and pretend we were big time marijuana smokers. <laughs> We went back to Don's house to hang out and stuff, and lots of people did. You could tell immediately how brave he was, not only because by how he looked, he would stand up for himself. Don was the rebel dread, stirring things up, and to be honest, I actually wanted to be Don Letts. It's a source of inspiration. Just by looking at him, you could understand the man was coming from a different angle still. Don was the spearhead of making videos in England for black groups. He makes these films from the platform of personal experience. Like you're looking out of his eyes, a black kid growing up with all these different things going on. I do something I feel like it needs to justify the space it occupies. I've made films about things that mean something, man, and they can actually help to move things forward. Either speaks to me or it doesn't.